Hello and welcome to Developers Den by Newton School. I'm Shyam Kumar. I'm a front-end developer, and today I'm going to start a very interesting project, which might add a lot of value to your resume if you build along with me. So it's an NFT landing page. You must have seen the thumbnail, and we are going to build exactly that particular NFT landing page. Here you are going to learn a lot of principles of CSS, good programming, building beautiful UI, and using good illustrations in your project. So stay along with me and code along with me because I'm going to build the entire project on this YouTube channel. So make sure you have liked this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe it. And a big thanks to Newton School for helping me make this video. Newton School is a platform where you can learn full stack development. They have an ongo course ongoing where you can enroll, and they promise you that you get a job of minimum five lakh rupees if you enroll with them. And the best part, you don't have to pay even a single penny until and unless you get a job. So let's get started with a quick demo of what we're going to build in this particular series. and then we'll start with the coding part so let's get started with a quick demo of what we are building so as you can see on my screen this project is hosted on my localhost 3000 i'm running it locally as you can see this is the landing page i'll quickly shift this here and you can see this is these are some uh, great gifs that we have we have downloaded these from the internet credit goes to the creator only and then we have this uh, landing page hero section where we are showing a particular title some description Few buttons, some random stats. All these are mock data. In general, when you are building a landing page for a company, you'll get these data from the backend. But since we don't have a backend, we are just building the frontend part. We are getting these data. Uh, we are writing these data. Uh, just rubbish, or you can say any data that comes to my mind. Then these are just some companies that the NFTs are generally integrated with. Then we have this carousel section here, where we are showing all the trending NFTs, and this is uh, scrolling by default, and you can scroll it manually as well. then we have this create your and sell your nft section where we are just showing some instruction to the user and then finally we have this uh, footer where i'm showing that made with fire by shuam at developers den so if you want to build this particular nft page make sure that you follow along whatever code i'm writing and uh, rewatch any part where you don't understand that any particular concept and you can ask me in the comments as well i'll reply you for sure so this is it let's get started by building this and if I promise you that if you build this particular project and add it to your resume, this will create a great impact on the interviewer or whoever is looking at your resume. So let's open our terminal very quickly. I'll increase the size so that you can see what's on my screen. I'll go to my desktop where I'm going to create this particular project, and I'll say npx create React app, create React app, and I'll call this as a uh, dev NFT, right? Dev NFT. So this will take some time to create a template for me. Here I'm using Create React App. So if you don't know what Create React App is, it's an npm package which creates a basic template for you to start developing in React App, uh, start developing React applications, right? Uh, behind the hood, it uses Webpack to module every uh, bundle everything. And if you don't know what Webpack is and how it is working, I'll be bringing up a new series on my channel where I'll be teaching you what Webpack is, how it works behind the hood, and everything. So and this is done so as you can see that i have a folder here dev nft which i'm going to open in my vs code here and so by default you get some uh, templates uh, for you to code along in react so you can uh, open your terminal in vs code i'm using vs code editor you can use any uh, development environment that you want uh, there is no restriction but i personally prefer using vs code because of the ease of use and all the extensions that we have here so this is the kind of uh, interface that you get and uh, these are the some of the files that you get along with uh, the main files in create react app so you can delete these files if not it's not required what i'll do is uh, so to see if it is actually running or not you can just say npm start npm start and while this is being done i'll just increase the size of my uh, vs code editor so that you can see what I, whatever i'm typing on my screen so i am already using the port 3000 so i'm going to use port 3001 i'm using port 3000 for the already developed project as you can see if you see this spinning react logo on your screen this means that your project is set up and it's running so what we will do is now is we'll create the folder structure for our components so let's analyze how we are going to build this particular website so whenever you get a figma design or whenever you see a website and you want to develop that in react make sure that you break them into components because react is all about components so the first thing that i see here is a header then i see this top fold section many people call it hero section as well or you can call it anything just make sure that you are segregating everything into components now here i am seeing that this is a top fold section then next to the top fold we have some brand integration and finally we have 
trending NFT section and at last, sorry, not finally, then we have this last we have this create and seller NFT, we can call this as info section because this is giving us some information about how we can create and sell NFTs. And finally, we have a footer. So basically, we have total six section, one, two, three, four, five and six. So we will go and here we will create a file uh, folder called components components. And inside the components, we are going to create all of these folders, six folders. So this is the coding structure that I'm going to follow. If you want to follow a different coding structure, you can follow that. But make sure you are following the principles of clean code and you're writing code, which is understandable by other developers as well, because then only you are going to learn a lot. You're going to build scalable projects and other developers might also understand your code because suppose from three months from now onward, if you want to see your code, you won't understand even a thing if you won't write clean code. So inside my components, I'll write the first thing that is header. So this is the naming convention that I follow. I create a folder with the capital name and then inside that I create a file called index.js which, which acts as the entry point for this particular file. I'll close this a little and this is my headers index file. I'll say RAFCE. RAFCE, so which is React uh, Arrow Function uh, Component Export. So I'm using React.js snippets. Uh, I'm using React.js snippets here, as you can see, this particular uh, extension, which is now this gives me, uh, not this one, uh, yeah. So this gives me some uh, pre-written templates by just writing some keywords. So as you just saw, I wrote RAFCE and I got this particular template. So I'll name this as header. Uh, also make sure that for React components, you are keeping the uh, naming convention like this only first letter should always be capital. Now inside my files, I'll also create a CSS file and that will be in small case header.css and I will import this particular uh, header CSS file inside this. So like this header.css. So what this will do is this will keep my CSS only to the particular component where I need. I don't write a common CSS file at the top of my components and then use it everywhere. I keep it like this. So all my logic and styling is isolated from each other. So this is it. Now my header is created. Apart from header, we also need a top fold section. So I'll say uh, top fold, which is going to be right here. So I'll say this is top fold, top fold. Top fold will follow the same structure. There will be an index.js file. I'll say RAFCE, this is top fold. And next to top fold, I'll also create a style file inside this, which will be uh, top fold, top fold dot CSS. I'll import the CSS file here. Uh, import, uh, I'll say top fold, top fold dot CSS. And I'll give it some spacing here. Next to top fold, I need a trending section. So for trending section, I will say, but sorry, next to top fold, I have this, uh, brand integration so i'll say brands integration brands integration so for this i have just one index file index.js which will be rafce rafce here it is brands integration brands integration now we have a file for brands integration just make sure that you are closing the div and remove this particular extra. okay perfect now it's working Similarly, I'll need a CSS file for brand integration as well. So I'll say uh, brands integration dot CSS. Now I could have written everything inside just one component, but it's better to make it as modular as you can so that you can reuse this particular component wherever needed. This is a small project project, but suppose tomorrow you are building a really large scale project there. You might need this kind of coding structure. So my brands integration is done. Then, then we have trending NFT section. So I'll say trending nfts and inside this again i'll create two files first will be index.js rafce which will be trending nfts uh, i'll keep this small trending nfts and finally okay finally trending nfts okay make sure that the name for export and the com component is same otherwise this will give an error here i'll also create a, a css file trending uh, nfts.css I'll import this particular file here. So I'll say import uh, trending, not T capital, import uh, trending NFTs, NFTs dot CSS. Now this is the trending NFT section. And finally, uh, we have two more sections. First is info section. And the last one is, so info section, info section. And inside the info section, we have index.js file, 
uh, RAFCE. This is info section, info section, and done. We'll create a CSS file for this as well, which will be info section, info section dot CSS. Now, why I'm creating all the empty files first? Because then only it will be just going inside each of the file and just uh, changing that particular file. So the development will be very faster once all this setup is done. So now I'll import this uh, info section inside my index file. So I'll say import uh, import info section info section dot CSS and perfect. Now last we have footer. So footer is just one line, but for that as well, I'm creating a separate component and you should also be doing this only in your react application. So for this, I'll say uh, footer and just two more files index dot uh, JS and index, uh, sorry, footer dot CSS. I'll just import this style file here. RAFCE, this is our footer and I'll say import footer dot CSS. Perfect. Now this is all the components that we need in our file. But along with this, if you see, this is the font size that here here we are using is not normal font size it is poppins so poppins i'm using from google fonts so just go to google fonts here you can find uh, thousands and hundreds of fonts which are free and open source you can use this these in your project so i'll be using a very common font called poppins i like this particular font if you want you can use any other uh, whatever you feel like uh, experiment with fonts find the perfect font that suits your application so i'll be using font from the weight of 400 regular uh, medium and then semi -bo semi bold and finally bold so these are all the fonts that i'm going to use so i'll just do this and then uh, okay if i want to use it i can just go to specimen and all these fonts are added now i just have to use it so i'll say download family Okay, it's downloading the file, but we don't want to file download it. So what we will do is uh, we will go here and we will copy the uh, fonts from here. Okay, they have changed their. So actually they have changed their interface earlier. There was just one line here to use it. So all these are added. Now what I can do is hmm, about in license. Where should I get the code for this? um i'm not getting the code actually so what we can do is download family yeah okay so from here it will just click this particular button view selected families and from here uh, i'll just remove this so this is the pop-in style that you have to use so i'll use this method import method and i'll copy this import file from here i'll copy this and i will paste it inside my uh, let's say index.css so this will import my pop-ins font for my entire file right you can see here and now i'll remove this particular default font that we get in the cr create react app and i'll replace it with this particular line so here if i paste it you can see my font family is now poppins so this is all that we have to do with the index.css file now i'll come to my app.css file i'll remove everything and i'll save it now inside my app.js file i'll again remove everything i'll say rafce this is my app and I'll also import my app styles. So I'll say import app uh, a capital app dot CSS. So perfect. Now if I'll go here in my React app, I'll see that there is just this app. So what I'll do, I'll quickly import all my files that I'm going to use. So all the files that I, all the components that I'm going to use. The first component is obviously our header. The next component is our top fold. So this is a uh, top fold. The next component. Uh, so Again, to show you on the website, this is our header. This section is the top fold. I'll close this. Uh, this section is brands integration. This is trending NFTs. And finally, we have info section followed by the footer. So next to the top fold, we will say uh, brands integration. Next to the brands integration, we will have trending NFTs. So trending NFTs. And next to the trending NFT, we have info section, info section. Finally, it is followed by the footer. So make sure that you are uh, importing the footer component and not just the default tag of the HTML. So this is how my application should, should look like like this. Top fold CSS does not match. Okay. So inside our top fold CSS, there is some uh, error. So F should be capital. Now, if you'll see header, top fold, brands integration, trending NFT, info section, and footer. So all of these things are done. 
now what i'll go to do i'll go to my app.css file and i'll uh, declare something so for my all board so what we will be doing here is uh, now uh, in my entire application i'm going to re reuse some of the classes again and again such as if you'll see this div is in the center of the outer div so for this component i can create a class known as absolute center and i can reuse the css lines again and again this will make me uh, code faster so what i will do is next to my components folder i'll create a folder called known as common so what i'll do is components inside my source i'll say this is my common folder and inside the common i will say that this is my styles folder and inside my styles folder i'll create two files the first file will be the first file will be common uh, common classes dot css now this particular class uh, is going to store all the common classes that i'm going to use in throughout my uh, code base so first class that i'm going to use is absolute center so now what absolute center does is it centers everything inside a div you must have heard of the joke that how hard is it for a developer to center a particular div or a component so we are going to use this particular class everywhere so i'll say display flex justify content center and align items as center so throughout my code base i'm going to use flex box box property a lot so if you're not comfortable with flex box i highly recommend that you go and learn what flex box is and why is it used yeah you're going to thank me because with flex flex box you can create dynamic responsive whatever kind of layout you want so make sure that you learn this next to our flex box i'm going to so as you can see on my website there is some gap here and here so i'm using a max width property for my entire application so the next class that i have is is max width so what i'm going to say that the maximum width of my entire application should be uh, 80 percent so 80 percent width and margin auto now what margin auto will do it will center everything now for margin auto automatically it will take equal margin on left and right side so this is why i'm using margin auto so apart from this uh, i'm going to use one more class right now which is uh, cursor pointer so cursor pointer so many of the items in this particular uh, component is clickable so for that we need a particular css class known as cursor pointer so i'll just say cursor as pointer that's it this is the file for my common classes now along with the common classes you might be seeing that i'm using a lot of colors on this particular website so for all those colors it is better that you declare all those colors inside a variable file now why you should declare everything inside a variable file because suppose tomorrow you want to change your ui suppose tomorrow you want to change your background color you just have to change one particular file and the changes will be reflected throughout your application so for that what i'll do for my root for my root for my root the first color that i'm going to use is background background so background is just plain black color that i'm using so for black color the hex code is six times zero that's it this is the background that i'm using and again i'll declare a color called white so white is going to be six times f three four five six that's it this is the white color that i'm using and we will declare all the other colors as along uh, as we go along coding this entire application so we'll save this now in order to use these two files inside throughout my application i have to import these so i'll go to my app.css and here what i'll do i'll use the css uh, convention import url i'll go to back file common and inside my common styles common classes now with this line all my common classes will be imported inside the app.css file and since since app is wrapping everything inside my code base all the components are wrapped inside my app these classes will be uh, accessible by all the components now similarly i'll say import url i'll say common styles variables now you must have uh, uh, skipped all these steps and you can directly use the hash uh, variable hashes in your uh, code base but i'm telling you how to make scalable project how to clean code therefore i'm creating all these files so now for my all the body i'll say uh, background color is going to be where background and similarly now if my background color is going to be black i won't be able to see any text here so for the text i will say uh, the color for my entire application will be white now i could have used white directly here but it's better to use a variable now this is uh, working perfectly now what we have to do is right now we have to just uh, go to the first thing that is our header and start creating our application now we are going to continue creating our header and the main fold in this particular part so what we will do is we'll go to our header 
but before this i'll close all the files because it's looking a little cluttered here so now inside my header the common convention that i follow is to give this a class name of the same as the file name so i'll say header and inside this header i'll create another div uh, not div a span basically uh, because if you'll see here we are giving a gradient to the text now giving gradient to a text is a uh, different type of styling we are going to use so for this we are going to give it a span instead of a div and we will give this as a class name of heading gradient now why this heading gradient because i'm going to use this particular class name throughout my code base if you will see this same style is given to this extra ordinary text as well this same style is given to trending nfts this same style is given to create and sell your nfts and at the footer as well so it's better to create a common class for this particular heading gradient and use it everywhere so here i will say develops develops and you can give it any name that you want i'll say uh, developers den as well developers den you can give it any name that you want whatever website name you want it you can give it so now if you'll see here develops developer den it is here now what i will do is i'll copy this class name i'll go to the header.css and start writing css uh, for this particular file so also uh, i want everything to be center in this particular div so i'll also use one more class called absolute center now just if you'll see it is at the center right now so uh, see uh, using common classes is really helpful with just but one class everything is centered now for my header what i want is i want the font size to be of 40 pixel now apart from font size i want the font weight of uh, 800 sorry not 800 i'll see 700 how is it looking it's looking quite good and then i want everything to be as uppercase so i'll say text transform as uppercase and next to this i if you'll see right now it is looking like this which is quite good but i want few more things first of all is padding i want particular gap from top so i'll say 12 pixel from left zero pixel and from bottom zero pixel so pa uh, writing padding there are a lot of ways of writing padding if you follow three uh, three uh, like this three point padding so this is for the top this is for the left and right this is for bottom you can write in two way and in single as well so next thing is uh, i want letter spacing so if you'll see there the gap between the text i want it to be uh, letter spacing to be as uh, 12 pixel will do now it's looking good but right now it's a cursor i don't want it to be a cursor so so selectable text so i want it to be as cursor pointer so i'll say carpo now if you'll see this is uh, looking like a logo but uh, i just have to give it some classes to make it look like this so for this what i will do is also this uh, develops developers gen is looking way big so what i'll do i just remove this i'll keep it like this only this perfect so now to give it the text gradient like this what i will do is i will go to my uh, copy this particular class name and i'll go to my common classes and here i'll write the classes uh, css for this particular uh, class so what i want is uh, i want a particular background color so if i look here at the uh, background color here uh, so what we can do right now we can directly copy it or because since i have already declared it so i'll just copy this particular linear gradient you can create your own gradient by creating uh, create linear gradient online so create linear gradient so just by going to this particular website cssgradient.io you can create your own gradient that you want i created this from here only and you can copy the css from here so i'll just copy this particular css you can pause this video and you can copy this so i'll just copy two classes uh, two uh, gradients so first one is and i'll save this so as you can see the text gradient background uh, i am keeping this inside this variable and it is rgb 105 two three five four two zero three and the text gradient one similarly like this so you can just go to this website you can create any gradient that you want experiment with the colors uh, change it accordingly whatever color you want keep it that only now if i'll go to my common classes now inside my heading gradient what i can say is i want the background to be a variable which is a uh, text gra text gradient bg now why do we need a background if we are keeping a gradient color on the top because sometimes suppose if uh, many of the browsers are not supporting gradient background so for that the fallback should be there so this particular style will be applied only if a browser doesn't support linear backgrounds 
now i for again i'll say background as where i'll say uh, text gradient one text grade you can give it any variable name that you want so i'll say text gradient one and now if you see this is how it's looking like but this is not what we want right we want it to the gradient to be on the text not below the text so for this we need two more property first one is background clip so background clip what it will do it will clip anything above it so i'll say uh, text so background clip text now if you'll see it is not uh, looking because it just clipped the background clip means cut it down now we need a fill color for this so for the fill color i'll say webkit webkit is used by brow uh, browsers so webkit text fill color so for the webkit text fill color i'll say transparent so for this particular text so what was happening for the text it was already white so i made it transparent so that we can see below it and what was below it below it was a gradient so this is how it is looking right now so this looks perfect now what we can do is we can start styling uh, creating our top fold component now for the top fold component it is a little complex and it is by far the most important component of this particular landing page because all your focus if you'll see is on this page only so what we can do is we can now break this uh, i'll keep myself here so what we can do is we can break this into components so this particular i'm calling it as top fold left and this i'm calling it as top fold right so there are two parts inside this top fold right now that you can see uh, again i'm repeating one is top fold left and one is top fold right so let's create two divs inside the top fold so what i will do is uh, two divs inside the top fold so here is my top fold and here i will do this i'll say this is div and i'll give it a class name of uh, so first of all as i told you that i give the first class name to the topmost div and it is same as the file name so this will be top fold perfect now uh, this particular class name is going to be tf left and tf right now why this because uh, tf will be stands for tf so that we can find that each class name which file it belongs to therefore and uh, apart from this i'll also give it a common class of absolute center now this will be tf left and the next div will be tf right now this div will be tf right now uh, we have two divs top fold left and top fold right so first of all what we will do is uh, we will style the left part to style the left part we just have to know uh, what are all there inside this left div one is a uh, heading one is some description then we have buttons and then finally some stats so what we will do is we'll create the heading first of all so i'll create a div and here i will say that this is the heading so i will copy this particular text from here i'll copy this and i'll paste it here now for this extraordinary i want it to be in a span why because i want it to be shown as a gradient right so i will copy this and i'll paste it inside here remove it from here now you can see it now this is what it looks like and i'll give it a class name of tf heading so which means top fold heading heading now if i'll go to my application you can see discover collect and sell extraordinary nfts now this looks perfect so what we will do is uh, we will just go and style the top fold left and top fold heading section uh, heading class first of all so and before that this particular top fold as well so i'll go here and for my top fold top fold uh, i'll say uh, we, it is already displaying as flex everything as center so the next thing that i want is it to be have a height of 92 view height now what this will do is this will give it a width height of 92 view height so that everything i can display it in the center of my uh, this screen so the next thing is overflow as hidden so if anything uh, flows outside of this div i want it to be as hidden so i'll say overflow as hidden perfect now it looks good the next thing that i want to style is top fold left now inside my top fold if you see left you will see there is one part two part three part and four part so i want all of these to be on top of each other so for that i want to be displayed as flex and along with flex i want it to be in the uh, direction of column not row because by default 
flex is in the direction of row i want it to be as column so therefore what i'll say uh, for top fold left i will say display as flex and flex direction give it column now everything will be in a column so if you here suppose we have a div and this div is just the description that we have here so i'll say give it a class name of tf description and inside the description i'll just copy this particular text here you can write any text that you want i'm just going to copy this so i am not unable to copy it anyway i'll just write it uh, please make sure that you are buying and selling the most trending most trending nfts out there welcome to my channel welcome to my channel uh, developers then that's it i hope this will do yep so we have some text here right now so for this particular text what i will do uh, now you can see it is by default in a column like it's on top of each other because of the flex direction property so now here uh, next to text uh, uh, this left uh, next thing i want it to have a flex of one flex one which means that take all the space that is available to you now next to flex one i will have padding left right as padding right as padding right as 48 pixel now why padding right because you can see there is uh, some gap between this and the right part so therefore padding right as 48 pixel and uh, that's it i guess if i'll save it now this is what it's looking like uh, so let me just check one thing that why do we have it like this where is cursor pointer okay so we forgot to apply one particular class inside our application which is inside the app.js here i wanted to have a class of max width if you remember in the first video we declared a class called max width inside the common class which means that it should have a width of only 80 percent by default so now you can see there is proper gap in the left and the right as well so this is what it is looking right now once we put the right side of the component for the top uh, top fold section the images will come up and this will automatically shrink so we will go to top fold and here now for this top fold next thing that i want is uh, obviously to style the tf heading so for tf heading also for this span we can give it a class name of uh, heading gradient heading gradient gradient now if you look this particular extraordinary is looking perfectly how i wanted it to look now i'll copy this particular class name tf heading i'll go to my top fold and here i will style it so now for tf heading the classes that i want uh, the style that i want is the font size to be of 72 pixel next font weight to be of uh, let's say 700 and find sorry 600 we can give it because it's looking a little too dark so yeah apart from 600 i can give it a line height so wh what is line height you can see there is some gap between the gap between these two is a lot so i want to reduce it manually i will say line height so line height is line between two lines inside uh, in the html file so i'll say 72 pixel so it's a little less now so automatically it will shrink and it will come to the next line once we have the right side of the top fold so next to the top fold heading let's style the top fold uh, description so i'll say description description okay perfect now for this i want the font size to be of 20 pixel only and i want the margin now margin if you write it like this just two margins which is 24 pixel and zero pixel this means that 24 pixel will be applied to the margin top and margin bottom and zero pixel will be applied to the margin left and margin right so now if you look there is some gap between the heading and the description so this is it the description is also done what we will do right now is next to the description we have some buttons here now if you'll see we have two buttons uh, one is a primary button one is a secondary button so for this uh, if you go down you can see that this same button is being reused here as well so and if your project is really big you might reuse this button a lot of times so it's better to create a common component known as buttons instead of writing the whole css html component every time so what i'll do is i'll go to my comment and inside my comment i'll create a file called as buttons uh buttons just button will do 
So in the button, I'll say uh, index.js and here I'll say RAFCE. Quickly, it will create a component for me. I'll say button. Now also I'll need a CSS file here, button.css. Now I'll import this style file here. So I'll say import and button.css. Perfect, now I'll give some spacing here. Now uh, let us understand what kind of props my button will receive. Now props, uh, we pass it to the child component to so that they can use it. So in React, if you're not sure what props are, what states are, I highly recommend you that you go to React Docs and you study more about it, or you can follow my channel because in my further videos, I'll be explaining everything in detail. So this button, uh, there is, uh, there could be two types. One could be a primary, one could be a secondary. There should be a text for this and there should be an on-click function. So generally these are the props that we get in our button. So props by default, React components have this uh, uh, props inside them so we can directly use it. So we can say const. Now uh, what I'm doing here is I'm destructuring from my JavaScript. So props is kind of an object. It will have all the props that you pass to it. And by this, uh, this convention, we can destructure from JavaScript. So destructuring, you should read more about it on React docs or JavaScript docs basically. So what kind of props are we going to have? Button type. Next up, we are going to have button text, btn text. Next to the button text, I'll say uh, btn on click, which means what should happen when we click on the button. And finally, custom class. I suppose uh, besides our default button, if I want to uh, style it further, to make it more reusable, you should always pass a uh, prop known as custom class for all your UI components. So for my div, now for the class name, Class name is going to be very dynamic based on what kind of component we are passing. So we are going to use this string template. Now, class is always a string, right? And inside uh, uh, inside your class name, you can't use variables, but uh, sorry, inside your strings, you can't use variable, but by using backticks, you convert it into string templates and there you can use variables very easily. So here I will say, I'll write some JavaScript, some itinerary, uh, some ternary operator, I'll say that if btn type, which means btn type is equal to is equal to is equal to primary. Now, which means that if my button type is primary, then what you should do, uh, then you should uh, pass this class. Uh, if you're not sure what ternary operator does, uh, do just, it is just simple thing like this, like a is equal to b question mark c as t. Now I'll quickly explain. Now suppose this particular thing is true. Now, if a is equal to is equal to b, then this part is returned, this uh, result is returned, otherwise this is ret returned. So this is what ternary operator does. So I'm doing it here only. So now if the button type that I'm passing is primary, then what you should do is just return this class name. I'm passing three, four class names, button, then uh, primary button, and then finally custom class, whatever custom class you have, just pass it here. Now and else or else if the button type is not primary, let us say it is secondary or tertiary, then in that case, return this thing. Instead of primary, just do secondary and that's it. Now if you'll see, uh, there is some error. Why? Because we are not closed. We are closing it. Uh, let me just see what kind of error is there. Custom class is there. Then we have this. Okay, we don't need it here right now. Okay, let me see what is wrong here. So I will just cut everything out from here. And I'll again see what I'm uh, doing wrong here. I'll say that uh, if my button type is equal to is equal to is equal to primary, primary, then question mark, then, uh, then pass this, otherwise this. Yeah, now it's working fine. Now here, what I want a class name of button a class name of primary button and a variable of custom class, custom, custom class. Perfect. Now I just copy this thing and I will paste it inside this. Now I'll save it. Now, if the button type is primary pass, uh, return these class names, otherwise return these class names, secondary button. Perfect. Now, instead of this button here, I will say whatever button text is being passed by my button. Now this particular button on click is remaining. So whenever I click on the button, what should happen on click, whatever button on click function we have passed, this should be executed. 
so this is it this is the index file for button now i'll quickly go to my button.css and i'll start styling this particular button so for my button now for it for you to see, see it properly what we will do uh, we will just go to our top fold and next to this top fold description what i will do is i'll uh, import those buttons so i'll create a div here so i'll create a div here and call it uh, tf left buttons so inside my div here i will call two buttons a button and let's call it tf left buttons right this is my buttons for the left so instead of buttons i can call it btns now this is a primary button and this is a secondary button so what i will do is i'll give a type here sorry not type i'll say btn type uh, whatever prop you are using there make sure that the uh, name names are same throughout their uh, components so i'll say button type this is primary and for this the button type is going to be secondary now if i save it now next to this uh, yeah I, button text as well so i'll say button text uh, this is explore and this is btn text is our button text is here let's say create perfect now if i see here you can see explore and create are here we just have to style them also now if i go to button.css i'll say for my button i want to style it right so for to style it what i will do i'll say first of all i need a padding padding needs to be 15 pixel from top and bottom and from left and right i need it to be 55 pixel so you can see they, there is some padding right now now next to the padding i want it to have a font size of 24 pixel by default next thing is i want it to have a font weight of 600 and next to it i want it to be circular so right now you can't see it because just to show you what is happening i'll say background color to be alice blue so that you can see what's happening right now instead of alice blue i can give it some darker color and let's say uh, let's say let's say let's say this aqua you can see what's happening right now i'll remove this line later on so next to this i'll say border radius of 60 pixel so that the borders are curved and then we need a width of max content which means instead of expanding throughout the div just take whatever content inside is given to you now apart from width i want cursor to be pointer so you could use the common class here as well but i'm just writing it here no worries now you can see these are looking like exactly like the buttons i'll remove this particular class name here now depending on what my uh, button is i'm going to use it so for uh, primary button for primary button i'm going to use a different background color so first of all i'll say that the color should be white so where uh, white now i'll go to my variables file and i'll declare one more variable here which is button background so i'll say here btn bg so for my button background what it will be it will be hashtag uh, 2f80ed 2f 80ed so i got this from the internet this particular class you can uh, create your own button by just passing uh, trying out different colors that you can use here so now you can see if in my button apart from this i'll say background color to be variable btn bg perfect now btn bg should be working fine if i see yeah this is looking exactly like the button that we have here now for my secondary button i want something else so for the secondary button so i'll say secondary button for my secondary button i want a border uh, not here i want a border here border of let's say two pixel which will be solid and the color i want it to be of white now if you'll see the create button is also working for, uh, looking perfect now we have created our buttons we just have to style these buttons in a flex like in a row so for that i will go inside my index here and also uh for this i want some gap now okay so i'll show tell you what i'm doing here now i'll just copy this tf left buttons class name and inside my css files i'll paste it and i'll give it some styling here so inside my tf uh, left buttons i'll say margin top margin top to be of uh, let's say 36 pixels so that there is, should be some gap let me see how it's looking it's looking perfect uh next up we want display as flex now if you'll see these are looking like this but for this button i want some space between the two buttons so uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are we need some margin here so i'll go here 
and I'll pass a custom class here. So if you remember, we had a prop known as custom class as well. So I'll give it a custom custom class called as custom class known as TF left secondary button. So you can give any custom class. I'll just copy this now, save it inside my top CSS and I'll paste it. I'll say margin left as 36 pixel, 36 pixel. Now, if you'll see the buttons are looking perfectly like, like how we wanted them to look. Now, next to this, if I look at my, uh, this thing, uh, this left part, we have this community, uh, what let's say we have this community stats basically. So to add those community stats, what we are going to do is, uh, uh just we'll say info stats. So I'll say next to my div here, I'll create another div. Okay, let me close everything so that you can see here. We have our heading, our description, our buttons. Now next to our buttons, we need uh, info stats. So I'll say class name as uh, TF left, TF left info stats, info stats. Now inside the info stats, we have three info item. Basically, all these are info items. So I'll create just one info item first uh, to see how it looks. So I'll give it a class name of uh, TF left info item instead of uh, TF left. Now, since it's inside the info stats div, I can just call it IS for info stat and I'll call it as info item. Now inside my info item, we have two more, two things. One is the count and one is the label. Now this is the, this 200 K is count and this is label. So what I'll say, I'll create two more div very quickly one. And this is going to be our TF uh, info item info info item and this is my count let's say this is for now this is just 200 k plus and the next i just copy this and this is instead of count this is label and what the label is label is collections collections perfect now if you'll see here it's looking like this so what i'll do i'll copy this twice and paste it now there are three stats basically and the other is 10k plus artist so i'll say 10k plus artist artist you could have created a common component for this and used it again and again but since these are just three i'm uh, copying and pasting the code here but if it would have been more than three let's say four five six i could have created a common uh, a different component for this info item and reused it here next up we have 423 plus k community 423k plus community community perfect now it looks like this we just have to style these items so for info stats i'm going to style separately which will be a flex to keep everything inside a row and for info item i'm going to keep everything on top of each other so the flex direction here will be obviously column so let's go to uh, info stats for this i'll go to top dot css i'll say that top fold left info stats info stats now inside this info stats i'll say that display as flex and i'll say the padding to be uh, 48 pixel from top and from left and right i want zero pixel zero pixel now if you'll see everything is inside a row now next to this i want the info item to be there so i'll say uh, top fold info stat info item now for this i just want some margin to be there so i'll say margin right to be as 24 pixel now you see there are there is some gap between these two now for this for each of the count that we have i'll say tf uh, tf info item count info make sure that the class name that you're using here is same as that what you provided in the previous file otherwise the styles won't be applied so for this count i want the font size to be of 36 pixel uh, font size to be of 36 pixel and then i want the font weight to be of 600 now if you look here this is how the stats are looking now we just i need one more thing i'll say display instead of displaying as flex here i'll say flex direction to be column and here apart from info item i'll just give it one more class which is absolute center now what this will do this will center everything for me vertically so i'll paste it and paste it and if i look here you can see it is centered it is centered it is centered now we just have to 
uh, change the label so i'll say tf info item and then label now for the label now for the label i just want the font size to be 14 pixel and then the font weight to be 600 now if you'll see this looks perfect so this is how my particular stats are looking and i guess this is it about the left part of my uh, top fold so if you will see the left part of the top fold is done now that the left part of the top fold is done we are going to create the right part so if you see the right part it is just a diamond it might not look like a diamond but let me show you why i'm calling this as a diamond because if you just rotate all of the cards 45 degrees it will form a diamond so therefore we will just uh, minimize this top left and next in the top top right let's start creating our diamond so first of all what i'll say is i'll create a div and i'll call it as top uh, give it a class name called t uh, top fold right diamond so i'll say top fold right and i'll call it as diamond perfect now here our diamond is going to come so inside this diamond uh, we have some diamond item so i'll create a div and i'll call it as a class name as sorry uh, div i'll give it a class name as top fold right diamond item so this is just a diamond item inside my diamond so diamond is basically the entire div which is going to wrap all of the cards and each card will contain an image so this image is going to be there now for this i'll give it a class name of let's say top fold right diamond image uh, top fold right diamond image img and an alt text known as diamond banner let's say alt text as diamond banner now if i save this obviously there is no image therefore it is breaking so from where i'm going to use the images i just go to open c now if you'll go to explore you will see that we have these amazing uh nfts here not here i'll say all nfts uh, we have certain nfts here which are generally uh, gifs so for those nfts what we can do is uh, we can just uh, go to that particular gif and i can copy that so from where i'll find those gif let's see uh, if you'll just explore you'll find a lot of gifs here on uh, nft nft's website so right now what i'll do is i'll just uh, copy any of the gif here so let's see what kind of gif we are we need so first one is this aliens nft so for this i'll say uh, i'll search alien alien friends not this alien i guess this is alien friends and inside this alien friends nope none of these are proper nfts so i'll just go to explore and here i'll copy the nft icon from this particular icon none of them are coming up okay i got one from here so i'll just copy link address from here and i will paste it here inside the source so i'll say src this so i'm not copying so i'm not uh, i'm just using these gif for educational purposes so copyright to open c only i'm not claiming any copyright here just for educational purposes so if you'll see here if i'll refresh this okay where is my gif why is it not working let me see okay so it's copy link address instead i should have done copy image address now if i do this save it now if i look see this particular gif is working now similarly i'll copy three more uh, gif but to copy the three more gif i'll have to uh, copy this item thrice here one two three and four now i'll just have to replace the link so i'll just find three more beautiful uh, gif for nfts let's see let's see we have this woman ape let's copy this copy image address and i'll replace this https from this then the next one uh, we can copy babies copy this paste it here now you can always replace it if you don't like it or what i can do is you can just find your own gif from here what i'll do right now is okay this one i like so i'll copy this image address i'll shift myself here and i'll paste it here i'll paste it here now if i'll see let's see if this looks good so these are the four gif which are stacked on on top of each other i guess because overflow is hidden 
if I just go here and I'll remove the overflow hidden property just a second if I just remove the overflow hidden property from uh, this div max width absolute center now you can see all the GIS that we have so I don't like this GIF in particular so what I'll do is I'll just copy all the image addresses from here and I'll replace all of my GIF you can find these GIF or you can find even better ones and replace it on your own so copy image address and I'll replace this as well so I'll replace this save it now if I refresh it yes I have some better images here now what we will do is we will style these diamond items so I'll go to my topfold.css and next to my info dot uh, label we have top fold right so for top fold right I'll say the top fold right section for this I want it to be as display as flex display as flex and I want flex to be as one so now what will happen I have given right as well one and for left also one so both of this left and right will take equal space inside my div so if you see here now if I refresh it it should be taking equal div uh, equal space so let's just see if the class names are correct so top fold right and top fold left perfect so I'll go to the CSS file again now instead next to the top fold right and left I also wanted to have a position of relative I'll tell you why I gave this a position of relative in a moment now next to this I have the diamond right so I'll say top fold right I GST diamond so diamond now for the particular diamond I want it to be as display as flex display as flex so that all the images are in a line but I want it to be in a square so what I'll do is I'll say flex wrap as wrap so what flex wrap property does that if the width is more it will automatically go to the next line now if you'll see all the images will go to the next line here so next to this wrap I want it to be okay so I'll transform it later but before everything I let me uh, style the image first of all because it's bugging me a lot so what I will do is I'll say uh, tf right diamond item diamond item now for this particular item I want it to be have a height of let us say 280 pixel and a width of width of let's say 280 pixel as well because I want it to be of a square now if I'll see the GIF is even now GIF is too big so let me style the GIF first of all so I'll say top fold right diamond uh, top fold right diamond not this top fold right uh, diamond item image item and inside this particular item if you'll see here now in the index file inside my top fold item I have this image right so for this I will say top fold right item image diamond item image diamond item okay what's the class name and next to this I'll say the image inside this for this I want it to have a height of 400 pixel that's it yeah now you can see all the four GIFs are visible a little visible so uh, we can do it next to this so apart from this I want it to have a height of this and for this item I want overflow to be hidden so I'll say overflow to be hidden and next to this property uh, I want it to have be absolutely center so for my diamond item here I will say absolute center and I'll copy this style for all the items for this as well for this as well and for this as well now if I save it everything will be at center but still it's not wrapping in a div so what I can do is uh, I can go here border radius pointer overflow hidden margin block okay so what I can do is inside my CSS file for this image I can say that object fit as contain contain now this the blocks will contain the entire image and I'll say uh, display as block so there is something missing here so I'll just quickly inspect it and see what is missing maybe I'm writing the class name as differently because okay item for the item okay this uh, class names are not being applied so okay this needs to be diamond item okay 
this particular class is not these styles are not being applied actually so let me just quickly check why is it happening so i'll copy this i'll go here i'll say i'll paste it and you can see there is something wrong diamond item it should be there right so i'll just copy this particular class name and i'll paste it here instead of this now it should be working yes now there was some uh, spelling mistake in the class names that i was i was typing so make sure that you are not making those mistakes now as you can see these are in a square now what will happen if i have to uh, rotate my diamond by 45 degrees you will see something really cool so i'll say transform as rotate rotate by 45 degree 45 degree perfect now you can see my diamond is rotated by 45 degrees but uh, if you will see that it is uh, first of all it is cropping out and the next thing is that my images are also transformed so what i will do is inside my transform item i'll say first of all i need some margin so i'll say i need some margin of 6 pixel now there is some margin in between the next thing is that i want it to rotate back so i'll say transform and i'll say rotate now we rotated it by 45 degrees what if i rotate each of the item by minus 45 degree it should go back to its original place now see now if i rotated it by minus 45 degree it all automatically rotated by uh, to its original place also i can see that here i need some space so i'll quickly go to my index dot file i'll open up my left thing and next to the heading here we need some space so save it now it's looking fine also now i want some border for each of these so to give the border i'll go to my top dot css for each of the item i want first thing that i want is cursor to be pointer so i'll say cursor to be pointer save it next to my cursor pointer i want it to have a overflow of hidden i've already given uh, let's give it a border so i'll give a border of three pixel solid and the color needs to be white now if you feel see it has some white border as well and it is looking like exactly like a photo how we wanted it to look now let's give it some border radius on top so to give the border radius on top i will say uh, border radius of 12 pixel so these are some now it's looking quite good if i save it and if i look at it it looks quite good so let me show you at the screen as well the border radius is looking exactly how we wanted it to look so now that our top fold is done okay so this is happening because the text is quite different therefore you see a change here right explore okay we missed one property in our button we missed this property to transform the text to capitalized okay so what we will do is uh, i'll just quickly see that what we are missing in the button here so now if you'll see in the button we are passing it as uh, explore and everything but in the css we are not uh, making it as transform as capital so uh, what we can do here is inside our button.css uh, we can for here we can say text transform as uppercase perfect now if you'll see for here the button is capitalized okay perfect now this our top fold is done we can now create the brands integration part so if you look at the brand integration part here also before brand integration we have something in the background you see this uh, light uh, light of purple color shade here so let's integrate that and for that purpose only inside my top fold.css here i gave this property of relative i'll tell you why now let's go to our uh, top fold index file and let's create a div here now inside my top fold index file let me close my left and inside the right let me close all my diamond now above this diamond if you will see we have another div here uh, that i'm going to create and let's call this uh, div as top fold right uh, here let's create a div and let's give it a class name of top fold right uh, tf right and let's call it bg background blob this is it so we are giving this uh, unusual name because at the background it's like a blob so for this now let's style this particular blob copy this blob item from uh, class name from here and for this particular blob we are going to give it some styles so what kind of style is uh, we are going to give it i'm going to give it a height of 550 pixel a width of 550 pixel as well width of 550 pixel now to show you how it is looking i'll just give it a background color of uh, let's say aqua see it's looking like this now i'm going to spread it so to spread it uh, what kind of property we need we need filter and i want to first of all blur it so to blur it by how much 
quantity i want it to be 160.58 this is just my experimental value that i got while creating a website you can experiment with different values so now you can see that it is spreading out very neatly next up what i want is i want to be uh, a little downwards so therefore i want it to have a position of absolute now what how relative and absolutes are working now if a div is relative and if a child is at absolute position to it we can give it any position and it will stay there so therefore i give this particular position relative to my tf right tf right okay perfect now this has a position of absolute now if you'll see it is here but since it is coming above everything i want it to be at the backwards so first of all i'll give it a z index of 19 minus 99 so that it's below everything and the next thing that i want to give it uh, is uh, obviously let's uh, say apart from uh, this thing let's make it from left i want it to be at 30 uh, percent so from left if it is 30 percent which means from left from here it is at 30 percent and from uh, right as well from top as well i want it to be at 30 percent now if you look it is here now but we are making some mistake here so uh, instead of tf making it as relative we can make this particular div as right so it's making some mistake we are making some mistake here because okay so we're not making any mistake we are actually transforming it to its position from the left so this particular blob is here we want to transform it a little to the left side so what we will do is we will say transform translate translate minus 50 percent so now what minus 50 percent will do is it will take it minus 50 percent towards the left now uh, also what we can do here is we can change the uh, background color uh, to be uh, the actual blob color that we wanted so the actual blob color that we had here is uh, i'll just copy this inside a variable so i'll go to my variables.css file and inside my variable.css file i'll copy this bg blob so i'll say bg blob bg blob so this bg blob will be uh, rgba rgba and 143 143 0 255 and then finally 0.35 and now i'm going to use this bg blob inside by uh, topfold.css so instead of aqua we will use variable i'll say bg blob perfect now you can see that this div is working perfectly but it is not positioned position position sorry positioned how we wanted it to be so what we will do is we will put it a little upwards and towards the left so i will say from the left keep it 20 percent yes this is where you want and from the top i also want it to be 20 percent a little top uh, uh, this will do so i'll say top 10 percent will do also let's keep it from top zero not zero let's keep it 10 percent and perfect now this looks good if you see here this is how it looks and this is how it looks so now the background blob is also there the next thing that i want here is uh, this particular brand integration that we have here so for the brand integration if you will see here yep the website looks quite good for the brand integration we need a particular image so this particular image you can directly download it from the internet or i can provide you the github link you can get it from there the github link will be in the description do check out the github repo or make sure that you are uh, giving a star to my github github repo uh, so i'll just uh, you can either copy it from there or what i'll do is uh, inside my assets folder inside my common folder uh, inside my source folder i'll create a assets folder assets now this assets will contain everything that i need so the first thing that i need is brands logo right so i'll have this downloaded here i'll copy it from here and i'll paste it here inside my assets so i can't paste it directly from here so what i'll do i'll open up my nft i'll paste it inside my assets so if i paste it you can see the brands logo is here so let me go to my brands logo for this i'll go to my brands integration file i'll close this now inside my brands integration file if you will see uh, i need to use this particular image here so for this uh, as usual you know the class name so before that let me import the style file that i have which is brands uh, integration integration 
dot css i have imported my style file here now for this i will give it a class name of uh, brand integration brands integration integration now instead of a text here i want a image here so for this i'll say image i close it i'll give it a alt text first of all the alt text will be brand integration logos and then i'll give it a class name the class name will be uh let us say okay actually we don't need some class name or maybe we can give it a class name to style the image so i'll say again bi logos and the alt text i can make it brand logos now it looks good now the source so for react if you want to import now if you're using create react app if we want to import some local image you'll have to import it like this i'll say require uh require then this and then the uh, relative path so the relative path is uh, go back go back go to assets and then it will be brand logos brand logos dot png perfect now if you'll see my application here uh, this is the image that we have we just have to style it now so i'll go to the brands uh, integration css file and in this i'll uh, write the class name for first of all the brand integration which is brand integration and here i'll say the width needs to be the width needs to be 80 percent perfect let me look see how it looks it looks good so the 80 percent is at between if i can see on the screen let me show you so this is taking just 80 percent of the screen the next it okay brands integration so it's taking 80 percent of the screen here uh, let me uh, so first of all let me style the logos first of all so i'll say brand logos for this i want the height to be 160 pixel 160 looks quite good if i can show you here you can see that 160 is looking good i just want it to be at the center of this particular div so for this i will uh, just do one thing i'll go to my brands integration file and here i'll say absolute center so uh, you can see the benefit of using common classes here i just declared absolute center once and i'm using it again and again in my code base so now you can see that it looks good uh, we just have to give it a margin so margin auto because itself this brand's integration is of 80 percent and if we want to center it i want it to have a margin of auto now if you'll see it is at the center now i want a few more things i want a padding the padding to be from top and bottom i want to be 24 pixel and from left and right i want to be zero pixel now it looks quite good if i scroll down this is how it looks the next thing i want it to have is cursor pointer so i'll see cursor pointer perfect now the brand integration part is also done this is where we completed the brands integration and the uh, this part which we known as the diamond which was basically a diamond so for the next part we are going to create this trending nft section now we can start creating our this slider that we have here to create this slider what we're going to do is we are going to use a npm package known as react slick so react slick is a npm package that you can use here and okay you can see it has downloads of 871 lakhs so a lot of people are using this so it's completely reliable and there are no breakage changes so you can just uh, copy this command from here you can go to your terminal and open one more you just paste it npmi react slick it's better to uh, rerun your project whenever you uh, add any npm package so i'll just say npm start and i'll have to press yes because i'm already using the port 3000 to i'm using the port 3001 for this so it's uh, working fine now now i'll close the terminal now for this i'll close this header as well top fold as well trending nft so but before that what i'll do i'll close everything close uh, all and now i'll go to trending nfts for this particular file we are going to create uh, the uh, uh, slider right so to create the slider what we have to do is uh, we have to import the particular uh, this react slick so to import it but before all of this we see that there is a heading as well the heading called trending nfts so as usual i'll give this a class name of trending nfts so let me bring my website here so that i can see the design see so the first thing is trending nfts nfts now inside this i want a title here so i'll say this is my title so the title is trending nfts so which is trending nfts but again i want to give it that particular gradient of text so if you remember from the previous section this needs to be inside a span so i'll just uh, keep it inside a span here and i'll save it now i'll give this a class name of 
trending NFTs title and give I'll this give it for this I'll give a class name of heading gradient now if you see in the website the you can see here I'll keep myself on top right now so you can see uh, this trending NFTs is showing the exact gradient that we wanted it to show so here next to the trending NFTs uh, I'll just quickly go to the trending NFT section and I'll style it so first of all I need some padding between uh, this section and the trending NFT section so what I will do is for giving the padding uh, I don't like this here let's give it here only so for this I will say trending NFTs trending uh, NFTs I'll say that padding from how much padding is there so from top and bottom I want 108 pixel from left and right I want this so okay this class name is not being applied here so there is one more n perfect now if you'll see there is some gap between these two now for this uh, title what i'll do is i'll say trending uh, sorry tn title tn title for this the first thing that i want is font size to be of 46 pixel you can experiment with different font sizes whatever font size you like because design is all about perspective one might like a design one might not so keep experiment with experimenting with different font sizes and everything so for font weight i want to to be of 700 and i want everything to be center so i'll just quickly go here and i'll say absolute center perfect now you can see trending nfts is here i want it everything to be capitalized so i'll say that uh, text transform text transfer uh, uppercase so trending nfts is looking perfect now uh, or instead the, I want S to be smaller so instead of doing this what I want what I'll do is I'll erase this and I'll say trending NFTs NFT perfect now here next to the font weight uh, I want uh, a padding inside as well so I'll say padding 24 pixel and margin for bottom for the slider that we have for this I'll say margin bottom to be of 36 pixel 36 pixel so now it is looking good we just need a slider here uh, but before the slider uh, let's uh, create this thing the background gradient that we already have top so if you'll see there is this background blob here as well so it's very easy i'm just going to copy this from here so from top fold i'll copy this blob and inside this trending nft i'll just uh, paste it next to this title but to paste it uh, i'll have to make sure that my trending nft is here and it's positioned as relative so position as relative perfect now i'll just copy the class for the blob as well and instead of trending uh, i'll keep it trending nft bg blob perfect i'll copy the class from here i'll copy the class from here and i'll paste it here and i'll replace the name to be trending nft bg blob save now you can see uh, this is looking perfect i just have to uh, uh, shift a few things so height and width are perfect position absolute is perfect filter and blur is as well but instead of uh, this uh, top 10 percent i'll keep the left to be as 50 percent left to be as 50 percent so now it's at center so now if you will see uh, there is something missing okay so what is happening is it's going on top because there is nothing below here once we add some content this will automatically shift downwards so uh, this is it so now i will do okay i got okay so this is perf working perfectly now i'll just uh, save it and i hope i'm not missing out on anything here background color filter left position okay perfect which one extra properties i am giving here absolute background filter left z index okay so no worries i can give z index extra here now once our blob is done we can start uh, creating our slider now to create the slider first of all uh, we need to create something called as the data data through which i'm going to map so to create the data i'll create a folder here and i'll call it as data now i'll create a file call as uh, trending uh, trending nfts dot something uh, trending nfts dot js yeah we can keep it as js so trending nfts dot js now here i'll say export const uh, export const uh, trending trending underscore nfts 
now this is going to be an array so in general for the trending section and for everything you get data from the backend api but since this is a front end website we don't have a backend api we are just going to mock all the data so what we are going to do we are going to mock an api response let's say we are getting this array from the api now what all this array will contain first of all an id now if you look at this particular card here what all data is here here is the let's say user's logo the nft banner the user name the user's actual handle and that's it so one two three four five four things we need to get from open c so how we are going to get these from open c so first of all the id is there uh, next up we need the banner banner means the nft logo that is actually there so i'll say all nfts open in new tab so which uh, let's just copy five or six nft let's say i like this particular one so i'll copy image address and inside my banner i'll paste it i'll save it now uh, this is the banner that i have i'll close this for a moment so perfect now i have a banner next to the banner i'll say user name user name name means the handle that user has let us say random guy okay and the finally uh, handle sorry this needs to be user name instead of user name let's say user handle and this i want it to be as user name whatever the name is there so i'll say uh, random random nft collector collector this is these are the four things one more thing that i need here is uh, the user logo of course so the user logo not user logo let's say user photo user photo so user photo from here we can just copy these photos that we are seeing here so i'll see i like this one so i'll copy image address and i'll paste it here now this is the kind of object that i want in my array so i'll copy it multiple times one two three oh ho. three four five six seven eight so eight times will be good so for id2 i'll have to replace the banner from let's say i like this one so i'll just copy this image address i'll replace the banner from here and for the random guy i'll say total cool dude total cool dude and let's say here i'll say cool dude collector i'll i'm not going to replace all the names and everything i'll just replace the banner and photo you get the idea like what kind of data will be getting from backend so i'll just replace the banner and photo for everyone so for this i'll say this is the user logo save it the next up we have uh, one more logo i'll copy this particular logo so for this id one two for id three i'll replace this from here four and for this I'll copy this one, copy image. All of these are just random data that I'm taking from NFT website. But if you're building a full fledged project, you'll be getting all of these from the backend. Now for ID four, now for ID five, I'll be copying, uh, let's say, I'll be copying this for ID five. So I'll replace this here for ID six. Okay, what's, okay. So for ID five, I copied it from there. I think I made a mistake. So for five, okay, instead of that, I'll copy this one. Okay, so I made pressed back by mistake. I'll copy image address and for five, I'll replace it. Perfect. Now for sixth, I'll copy for six. I'll copy this one real goblins for six ID six. I'll replace it from here. Perfect. Now for seven, let's copy BPYC Panda and for six okay for seven actually for seven let me just replace it for eight that is the final one let me just uh, copy one more i'm pressing back by mistake i don't know why so i'll just copy the invisible friends here from copy image address and replace it so this is done okay so now as you can see that this is done uh, we just have to replace the banners so for two we already did we just have to copy few more so for this i'll copy this one copy image address i'll replace it from here uh, v i'll copy let's say let's say let's say this one i like 
which one let's say this one copy image address for fourth one so for fourth one as well i will replace this here for fifth one as well you can skip this part or you can fast forward this part if this is uh, boring you but i'll have to do this so that my website looks quite good so for five we'll do now for rest of them you can do it on your own so like let's go to this uh, trending nfts i'll open up this file section as well let's minimize it a little now here what we have to do is we have to import the slider component so next to this uh, okay got it instead of doing it here make sure that you are keeping the blob in the trending nft file and not inside the title so if i save it now here what i will do is i'll say slider from react slider and i'll call this now react slider if you'll go to the documentation of react slider it takes some settings so these kind of settings so to create the settings you can create a const here const uh, settings settings and for the settings you can uh, pass the things that you want to see so i want the slides to show slides to show to be three so at a time only three slides would be shown i want slides to scroll slides to scroll to be one so if i scroll i want only one slide to change auto play to be true so that uh, whenever i land on my website it automatically starts scrolling and the next one speed so i want it to scroll at after every 500 millisecond that's half a second and arrows at as false i don't want any arrows here arrows the button that you see on sliders generally to go to the next slide so how to pass these options just do this spread the settings here that's it now my slider will be working fine we just have to map all the trending nfts we just created so i'm going to use a very interesting property of react which uh, javascript basically which is map so i'll say trending nfts dot map now what map does is it picks out picks out each of the element inside the array and does something with it and returns it so let's call it nft for each of the nft i'll declare an arrow function now i want to return a card which kind of card i want to return this particular card so what we will do inside trending nfts i'll create a folder and i'll call call it as trending card right now inside a trending card i'll create an index file obviously index.js i'll call it rafce which is my trending card now i'll save it i'll also create a style file here which will be trending card.css and i'll import it inside the trending index file so i'll say import uh, trending card.css perfect now i'll save it now uh, what we have to do is for each of the nft what i want to do is i want to return something which is a trending card now if i just save it and i'll see here on my own website you will see five cards sorry eight cards instead of eight one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay there are a lot of cards coming uh, let me see why because in my trending nfts how many things are there six seven eight i am not messing up with any of the id right okay so what i'll have to do is i'll have to first of all import the settings for all of the uh, this slider so sorry not settings the css file and everything to import everything you have to uh, import these csl css files inside your uh, component or it's better to just directly link this particular html file uh, this css file in your html file so we'll go to public inside our html we'll just paste it here and i'll save it now to uh, for this to uh, apply we'll have to close close our server and we'll have to say npm start again uh, yes now if you'll see you can see the trending card is here and it's automatically scrolling as well so the slider is working perfectly we just have to uh import the card for uh, we just have to create a card for every uh, card for every nft so for this i'll close this thing as well now i'll close assets too now inside my trending card i'll close this terminal so that you can see here what i'm doing so for my trending card i will just say that from my props so i'll have to pass the data from the this slider as props so i'll say nft is equal to underscore nft I am passing this particular NFT as a prop to my trending card and calling it as NFT. You can name it anything just to show you that you can call it as DVECSH like this as well. But the naming convention is like this only. So for my trending card, I'll destructure first of all const NFT from props. Perfect. Now, since we have destructured it from the props, 
now inside our trending card obviously the first thing that i'm going to do is to give it a class name of trending card trending card trending card not zero card trending card now inside a trending card let's see what kind of content we have we have first of all a gradient border now in this particular video i'm going to teach you how to give a gradient border which is uh, a really cool css trick basically you just can't write css border as gradient it won't work we there is some tricks for that so for that reason i am going to wrap everything inside a trending card in a wrapper so i'll say trending card class name as uh, i'll say tc inner just inner wrapper now i'll tell you why i keeping so many divs on top of each other you'll understand in a moment now inside this trending inner wrapper i'll need one more div which will be finally the container for us which will be trending card cont content right content now we will write every content inside this particular div you must be asking why we need two more divs then so this div will center everything inside my slider and this div will be used for that gradient bag, uh, border that we see so for this tc content the first thing that we need is this particular banner image so the first thing i'll write here is img and let's give it an alt text first of all uh, alt text will be obviously nft dot user underscore name let me see what kind of variable i'm using uh, i'll just copy this thing for my own references so that i i don't mess it up so i'll just paste it here and i'll com comment it out all of these okay so username is present so this instead of username i'll just call it as user yeah username all text will be good for source i'll say uh, nft dot banner and for class name i'll give it a class name of trending card banner perfect now if you'll see the images are here and these are scrolling as well obviously we haven't replaced the images for the last few ones so it is same you get the idea like how you can replace these images now you'll see all of these are images are uh, like aligned towards the left we want it to be center so therefore we will go to trending card and we will write everything that uh, for the trending card i want everything inside this to be center or we can just say absolute center now you can see all the cards are at the center now there is one issue now this trending card is uh, displayed as flex so everything will be displayed inside a row so for everything to be displayed inside uh, on top of each other we want the trending card to be flex direction as column perfect now whenever we write something uh, below this it will be displayed on top of each other now next to this uh, particular banner we want the user info now if you see we have this user info where logo name handle is there so for this now next to this image uh, i'll create one more div one more div and i'll call this as class name as tc user info user info now before we start getting into user info let's go and create this uh, gradient border and style this image as well so let's go to trending card and inside the trending card the first class name that we will be targeting is obviously uh, tc inner one tc inner wrapper so how to style this gradient i'll tell you right here so let's give it a background color of variable let's say text gradient one if you remember text gradient one is the gradient that, that we are using for all of our text now if you see here uh, let me see if the class name is correct tc inner wrapper uh, okay perfect so this is there okay okay so the image is taking the entire width of the uh, wrapper that we have so okay i'll just quickly write something here so that you can see uh perfect i'll see if the text gradient is being applied or not for this wrapper so for the wrapper background color is being applied so okay instead of background color let me just do it background because it's gradient so yeah now you can see the gradient is being applied correctly you can see here so next to this background the next property that i want it to have a padding so this padding will be equivalent to the border width that you want so i want it to be 2 pixel and i want to be circular so i'll say border radius as 18 pixel now if you'll see you can slightly see a background uh, of gradient here so to convert it into uh, let's say what to convert it into border what we will do is now target the tc content content was the div inside this wrapper 
so for tc content i will again say uh, background color to be where background which means black color now if you will see it is looking like a particular uh, this thing what i'll say a border of two pixel we just have to do few more things the tc content i want it to have same uh, border radius as that of the wrapper so border radius will be 18 pixel now if you will see we can see a two pixel border from the bottom but not from the top because image is still having corners we have to make it border but before that i want it to have some padding so i'll say padding of 18 pixel padding of 18 pixel perfect now if you will see we got the uh, gradient border that we required so this is about the tc content now we'll just quickly style the banner uh, the nft banner that we have for this i want a height of 300 pixel and i want a border radius of 18 pixel border radius of 18 pixel perfect now it's same so uh, do remember that you have to ensure that the border radius for this this and this are equal otherwise it won't look good now that the banner is styled let's go to the trending card and start creating our user info section so for user info section we need a few divs the first will be the if you look here one this left part and at the right we just have this ethereum uh, logo so for the left part we are going to create a div and let's give it a class name of tc user info left tc user info left now in the left part we need an image and a div so for the image uh, first of all i'll give it an alt text alt text will be uh, nft dot nft nft dot uh, let's give it user handle or username username perfect and for the save it and i'll give it a class name as well the class name will be tc user logo tc uh, user logo and for the source for the source i want it to be sorry source will be nft dot user photo user dot photo not dot underscore photo perfect now if you'll see here you can see a photo here as well which is looking really ugly because we haven't styled it yet we will be styling it so we have this uh, user logo so next to this in the trending card css let's style the user logo first of all but before the user logo let's style the info user info entire div so for this i'll say tc uh, tc user info for this uh, i want it to be display as flex why not the common class because i don't want it to center ex exactly i want the justify content to be space between uh, space between now what space between means suppose this is a div there are two elements inside it both will be pushed to the extreme ends of the div so therefore i'm using space between and vertically i want it to be center so i'm using align items as center uh, apart from this i want it to have the entire width so i'll say uh, that take the entire width so 100 percent and the next thing is obviously margin i want some margin between the user info and the photo above so i'll say margin so not max resolution i'll say margin so from top and bottom i want 16 pixel from left and right i want zero pixel so obviously it won't be seeing you won't be seeing it right now because i'll have to style the user logo first of all so i'll say tc user logo for this not log uh, logo yeah for this the first property i want is obviously the height i want height to be 60 pixel and then i want uh, if you'll see now it's looking good but i want it to have a border radius as well to match the top so i'll say border radius of uh, for this 8 pixel will be good so now we have border radius as 8 pixel next up now suppose when we start writing the name and everything here i want some margin at the right so i'll say margin right to be uh, let's say 12 pixel will look good perfect it looks good so margin right will be 12 pixel so we have tc user info uh sorry for that logo we have everything now if i go here next to my this part i have to uh style the tc ui left as well so for this we just need two things here tc ui left i want it to display as flex and flex as one which means when i keep this uh ethereum logo here i want rest of the space to be taken up by the left part of my user info now to copy uh, now to get this uh, logo for ethereum i'll just quickly go here At, but before this let's uh, complete the name and uh, handle part so inside my trending card next to the div for uh, this image 
we need a fragment actually fragment or you can create a div so for this i want uh, ti user and ti user name so for this i want uh, two things first of all is a div and this is just nft username uh, nft dot user name and the next thing is user handle so i'll say one more div and i want it to have nft dot user handle handle perfect if i look here you can see it is coming up perfectly next to this uh, i just want to style each of this so i'll give both of these a class so i'll give a class name of tc ui ui username and i'll give this as tc ui user handle class name as tc ui user handle user handle perfect now i'll just go and quickly style both of these so i'll say tc ui uh, user name this for this i just want to change the font size and everything so for this i'll just say font weight font size of 18 pixel so i'll say font size of 18 pixel and font weight of uh let's keep it as 600 let me see how it's looking yes uh, you can see as well the font weight of uh, 600 is looking perfect now for tc ui uh, for tc ui what uh, user handle user handle uh, i can keep it as font size as 14 pixel font size as 14 pixel it must be looking good but it's i want it to be a little lighter color so i'll just say opacity as 0.7 you can use a different shade of white color as well but i just but i thought that uh, keeping it like this will also work also if i'll see here yeah it looks good it looks good now i just have to add this particular uh, logo for ethereum so you can copy it from here as well this particular logo but it's not looking good i'll copy this purple one so i'll copy it i'll say copy image address now i'll go to my uh, this trending card and next to the trending left tc ui left i'll copy uh, i'll close this and next to it i'll just paste this image so for this i'll say source is equal to this if i save it and if i go here you can see it's a it's quite big i just have to make it small so to make it small what i will have to do is uh what i'll have to do is mm, okay i'll give it a class first of all i'll give it some alt text so that this yellow line is gone so i'll give it a alt text of eth on solana and then i'll give it a class name of let us say tc solana logo tc solana logo i'll copy this class name and i'll style it from here so from here paste it and now i'll just give it some height and it will work so for solana logo i'll say height to be of 36 pixel 36 pixel perfect it is not center actually so i'll make sure that it is center so what i will do is uh, i'll see that where i'm not doing it correctly here there is next to this there is there are four divs and to align it center what i can do is i can give this image instead of keeping it like this okay so i'm uh, making a mistake here i pasted this image inside the user info left just cut, cut it paste it here and it should work yeah now it's looking perfect now if you'll see random nft collector image size is looking perfect as well the background blur is also working perfectly now our trending section is also done if you'll go here you can see here also we just need one more thing this is the final thing here which is a see more button so now i'll go here and i'll add that particular button so we already created a reusable button in our previous videos if you haven't watched that go back and you can watch that first of all now here next to our slider we need a button so for that particular button i'll say a div here i'll call the button i'll button and i'll give it the props that we already have first one is btn text so the btn text will be uh see more so while i'm building this if you want to learn how to create reusable ui components i have an entire series on my channel which you can watch where i have taught how to create drop down how to create buttons how to create modals and everything on that particular in that particular series so you can check that as well now i want the type to be secondary 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 s should be small i guess or it is fine the next thing is custom class i want the slice to be a little smaller than my default so therefore i'll say see more button and why is it saying error because i haven't imported it yet 
So make sure that you are importing it. So button, it's not imported. I don't know why it is giving error while importing it. So command X, I'll just uh, try it again. I'll say button, okay. So it's giving some error, so no worries. I'll just import it from here. Import button from, from, uh, go back, just go to common and then button that's it save it so this should be there if i see see more button is here now i just have to style it and keep it in the center so for this particular div i'll give it a class name of tn button uh, trending nfts btn now i'll go to my css file and in next to the blob i'll write two more classes uh, first one is obviously the uh, tn button so this will be tn uh, btn and for the tn btn i'll say uh, margin top to be margin top to be 36 pixel and yeah there is some gap but i just want it to be at the center so along with this i'll say absolute center perfect it's at the center i want this size to be a little smaller so for this i'll say uh, for the seymour btn i'll say font size to be of 14 pixel perfect so now as you can see this button is working fine so instead if i do something if I remove this Z index now, so you can see the blur is having its effect on the button as well and the button's uh, border is also looking gradient wise. So yeah, this is it. The trending NFT section is done. Uh, it is just 20-30 uh, minutes work from now till we create this create and sell your own NFT and the final footer. Now we have the trending section built. We have the top fold built. We have the header built. Now we just have to create the info section and the footer. So we'll try to complete everything inside this particular video so let's go to the info section and have a look what we have to build so you can see there is a border basically a very slight border then we have a heading which we can create very quickly with the common class that we already have then we have this section where there is a logo uh, title and some uh, description so let's quickly get started but before building this uh, let's create a new file here so to create a file here and i'll call this as info item info items dot js so here I will uh, declare uh, an array to keep uh, to store my icon file to store the title and the description and we'll quickly map through the array to build this info item section very quickly. So I'll say export const info items. Now all these are info items, right? So this will be an array and each of the uh, each of the object will be an ID, a logo. So from where I'll get the logo from? So I have already downloaded the icons. I'll copy this and I'll uh, paste these uh, icons inside my assets. You can download these icons from my GitHub folder, which I'll be providing link in the description, or you can download your own logos and icons online. I'll just uh, quickly tell you my favorite site to download icons, which is Icon Scout. So I can just go, you can go here. You can download it from here, or you can try your own. Just search for the wallet icon for upload file icon and a bookmark icon. So I have the icons here. So for the logo part, uh, I'll just say instead of logo, I'll call it icon. It will be better convention. Now I can from where I'll get it. So I'll say require. I already told you that inside React, if you want, if you're using create React app in the beginning of creation of your React app, you have to import the React file uh, local assets like this only. So go to not like this, go to assets, then go to icons. And the first one is wallet.png wallet.png now for this the uh, section title is section title is i'll just copy it from here set up your wallet copy it paste it here and uh, finally the section description i'll just call it as description i'll again copy it from here once your wallet everything copy it paste it from here now i'll quickly copy this two more times we 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 now i'll change the id to two and three now for instead of wallet the second icon that i'm using is of paper upload paper uh, paper uh, upload is u is capital upload you can check from for the names here uh, paper upload so paper upload is there now i'll just copy this copy it from here paste it here and copy the description as well paste the description here Perfect. Now, finally, for the third one, I'll copy the title. I'll copy the title and I'll change the 
logo from wallet to uh, final is bookmark bookmark dot png and i'll also copy this thing copy it and just paste it here perfect just put a full stop uh, so now we have an array with all the info items that we are going to uh, show in our box so just i'll go to the info section and the first thing that i do always do is give it a class name of uh, info section info section perfect now inside this info section uh, if you'll see we have a, a heading first of all apart from box i was going to say box but we have a heading first of all so i'll remove this and i will create a div and inside the div as usual i'll create a span and i'll say create and sell create and sell your nfts and i'll give this a class name of uh, heading gradient heading gradient gradient perfect now if you'll see inside our application heading gradient is working create and sell uh, your nft it's working fine i'll give this a class name of uh, info section heading perfect now i'll just go to my info section css file and i'll style these so the first one is info section info section so for this if you'll see uh, there is a card border actually so you see this border is there so for that i'll go to my i'll close this assets folder i'll go to my uh, styles common variables here i'll declare one more variable known as card border card border so again why we use variables because suppose tomorrow we want to change the ui so we just have to change the color values at one place and also if you're implementing dark and light mode in your application this will be much more useful so i'm just using 282525 if you want to build more uh, neomorphic borders you can just go to uh, neomorphism generator neomorphism neomorphism generator and you can go to this particular website and here you can just pick your color as black and you can create more subtle borders from here only so i'm going to use this particular color and inside my info section i will say that uh, for the border i'll say border two pixel solid variable card border card border perfect now if you'll see here you can see this is the border that i want now but before this i want some margin here so i'll say margin from top and bottom i want 48 pixel from left and right i want zero pixel so now this border is coming here it's looking perfect and yep it's looking perfect next thing i want is some padding inside it so that my content is displayed well so for padding i want 36 pixel from top and bottom and 18 pixel from left and right so this is how it looks and i just want the border uh, corners to be little rounded so for corners i will say uh, border radius to be of uh, 24 pixels so 24 pixel will be perfect for me yeah it looks good now since the info section is done uh, for the info section heading what i will do is i'll say font size of 36 pixel this will do uh, font weight of 700 pic 700 just 700 will do uh, yes this is looking good I want it to be at the center so but uh, for center I can just give one class here which will be absolute center perfect it is at the center now now for uh, other things I want it to have some padding and margin from the bottom icons bottom content so I will say padding so for padding I will say 12 pixel will be good and for margin bottom uh, we want it to have some little margin from the bottom so 36 pixel will be fine so perfect now you can see there is some gap here here my other info item content will come so if i go here inside my info section so we had this div now i'll create a div here and for this div i'll give it a class name of info uh, info section item container items container items container perfect now for each of the item that we have that is info items dot map again you can read more about map filter and reduce but here i'm using only using map because uh, this serves my purpose map takes out each element from an array and returns something whatever action you want to do whatever function you want to call on it you can call so i'll say it as info item now for info item i want to return an info item card so i'll just create one more folder and i'll call it as info item info item perfect now for this info item i'll create a file call as info item sorry uh, index.js and i'll say rafce which will be info item now save it 
and also create a CSS file for this, which will be info item dot CSS. Perfect. Now I'll import the CSS file here. Import uh, info item dot CSS. Perfect. Now save it. Now here for each of the info item, I just want to pass an info item component that I already created. Now for here, I'll just say item is equal to underscore info item. I'm passing this info item as a prop to this info item. Now you must be seeing there are three info items because we had, uh, I'll keep myself here. Uh, now here, now you'll see that we have three info item because uh, we just had three things in my array for info item. Now we just have to go to info item. Now here I'll say props. I'll say const uh, destructure my item from the props. So item which will be props. I'll save it. Now inside my div here, uh, what I have to do is I have to see what all things I need. We just need three things. But before this, as usual, I'll give it a class name of not children. I'll give it a class name of info item. Now inside my info item, uh, first thing that I need uh, is an image, which is my icon. So to remove the yellow line, which is coming here, I'll say alternative text is going to be info section title. Let us say item dot section underscore title. Perfect. Now next, if you'll see, set up your wallet, upload and create and the image is failing because we haven't passed the source yet. yet. But before passing a source, I'll say give it a class name of, uh, give it a class name of, uh, we don't need a class name if you don't want to start, if the, see, the icon is already default given a size, but let's give it a class name of II icon, II icon, info item icon. Now we just have to pass the source. So I'll say source is equal to uh, item dot, uh, item dot icon. Now, if you see all the three icons are shown here. Now, next to this icon, we need one more div. Now, inside this div, what we need is item dot section title. Inside the curly braces dot section title. Now, and I'll give it a class name of uh, II title. II title title. Perfect. Now, we just need a final div here. Final div. I'll give it a class name of uh, let's say II description, II description, and this will be item dot description. Description. If you will see here, everything is coming up perfectly. We just have to style it accordingly. Now I'll go to my info item dot CSS file, and here for the sorry. Here. Now here for the info item that we have here, info item, which is the wrapper, which is containing the icon, the title and the description. Uh, first of all, I'll say flex direction to be column, but this won't automatically do anything because for here, I'll have to give something called as absolute center. Now what this absolute center is doing as, I, as you know, that it is uh, giving a property of display flex, align item center, justify content center. And by default flex is, uh, Flex puts the content in a row and I want it inside a column. So therefore this particular uh, thing is there. Now you can see everything is at the center. Uh, next, I want the text aligned to be at center, text aligned to be at center. Now you must have seen sometimes the text starts from left, from right. I want it to start from the center. Now apart from text align, I want a uh, margin as well. So from margin, from top, bottom, I don't want any margin. I'll say zero pixel, but from left and right, I want 28 pixel margin. So because why? Because you can see there is some gap between both of these. And also, uh, if you will see that it is approximately one third of the entire div. So I will say a width to be 30%. That's it. Now for info title, which is II title. II title, I want it to have a font size of 28 pixel, font weight of 600, font weight of 600. And finally, uh, some gap from the, okay, from here, finally some gap from the top. So what I will do is I'll say margin top to be 18 pixel. Perfect. Now just the description part is remaining. So I'll say IA uh, description description for IA description. I'll say uh, margin top to be of 18 pixel, 18 pixel and margin. No font size to be of 18 pixel. Now, if you'll see it is looking perfect. We just want all of these three in a row now. Now to keep this everything in a row, I'll go to my info section and see the name of the container is I, uh, this info section items container. So I'll go to my CSS file and next to my heading, 
I just do one thing that uh, the name is is items container now here my display as flex and flex direction as uh, justify content as justify content as space around what space around us it gives equal spacing around the content so now you can see it looks exactly like how we wanted it to be right we just have to style the footer now so we'll go to the footer component and here i will say instead of footer i will say uh, made with fire by shuvam so i'll just copy it from here because i don't want to copy the fire icon from google again so i'll just say this i'll save it now if you'll see it looks like this so to make it uh, everything this particular thing gradient you know how to make it as gradient i'll say span and not sappen not sappen span and i'll move everything inside the span command x paste and i'll give it a class name of footer and absolute absolute center perfect now you can see it's at the center but uh okay so give a class name here the class name will be obviously heading gradient now if you'll see it is in the gradient and yes remove this extra space here go to your footer dot file just say footer now for this i just want to change the font size so it won't be much task so i just want so not font size i wanted to have margin actually so from top i want 62 pixel from left and right i want 0 pixel and 24 pixel from the bottom so perfect now you can see uh, the footer is done so this is it uh, the entire nft landing page is done in future i might create one more video to make it responsive it will be just one more task but so far you can add this project in your resume i hope you learned a lot i hope you learned how to use flexbox how to create uh, scalable projects in react and if you learned if you like this video make sure that uh, you are subscribing to my channel because i'll bring more such content more such projects in future again thanks to little school for helping me make this video see you in the next series see you in the next tutorial where i'll be teaching you something for sure bye Thank you.